questions of the self-evaluation test for your preparation along with the central idea, theme and tone at English for all reasons good. For the detailed explanation and the self-evaluation test, you can refer to this previous video where I have included the quick summary, the explanation, the two devices and the questions are there. So you can watch the video, attempt the questions and then come back to the answers here on this video. So first of all, let's do the theme. The poet Leslie Norris is quite touched by the plight of a tiger in the zoo. In his poem titled A Tiger in the Zoo, he paints a perfect picture of words expressing the entrapped outrage of a tiger. So this is in Potter Hill. In the theme, it is entrapped outrage of the tiger. So let me highlight this entrapped outrage of a tiger. This is important. Now, a tiger should be free in the jungle following his natural instincts of hunting and survival. This majestic animal is not supposed to be confined in a cage in a zoo and be an object of entertainment for humans. So this is what the poet wants to tell us. The poet wants to convey that a tiger should be free in the jungle. It should be following its natural instincts, natural instincts of hunting and survival. So this majestic creature is not supposed to be confined in a cage in a zoo and be object of entertainment for humans. In the poem, the poet beautifully brings out the anger and pride of a tiger in the zoo. So the tiger is angry, but the tiger is proud also. The tri tiger is proud at its might. So the might of the tiger is behind bars. So he feels helpless and offended. Therefore, he ignores the visitors who visit the zoo, showing that he is not interested in them. On the other hand, humans who have captured the tiger are interested in confining wild animals and encroaching their habitat. So this is another part of the theme where the poet talks about the interests or rather the selfish interests of man. So he says that humans who have captured the tiger are interested in confining wild animals and encroaching their habitat. Wild animals are not a danger for humans. It is only on being provoked that they attack. Thus, the poet highlights the fact that we humans should introspect and let the wild animals, now in this case he talks about tiger, live peacefully and undisturbed in their natural habitat. So this is the theme. Now let's talk about the central idea. So the poet here highlights the cruelty of man against wild animals. So again it is the same but it's written in a different way. So it just highlights the cruelty of man against wild animals. A tiger in this poem. A tiger in the zoo. The tiger in the zoo is shown in contrast to the tiger in a jungle. So in the poem, he has created a contrast. So there's a tiger in the jungle and a tiger in the zoo. So this comparison intensifies the pain and helplessness of the captivated tiger. So the poet, when he creates a contrast. So he conveys that if this tiger was or if this tiger were in the jungle, then what would have been its condition? So the caged tiger walks only few steps of the cage and remains awake at night because of anger. For his selfish interest, man has taken away tiger's freedom. The tiger would have been snarling and hunting at its own will if it were in a jungle. So this is where the comparison and contrast comes in. So he would have been enjoying his freedom. The poet wants to convey that the appropriate place, so this is important, that the appropriate place of the tiger is not in the zoo but in the jungle. So this is the central idea and from here you can write the message also. So the last line it actually gives the message that man should leave wild animals the appropriate place of wild animals tiger in this case it is not in the zoo but in the jungle now we come to the tone of the poem now when the poet describes the tiger in the zoo then at that time the tone is of anger because it shows the anger the rage of the tiger the anger of the tiger on being caged the tone is of regret also now, when that regret comes in, the poet regrets that one of his kind, that is man or humans, they have captured 
the tiger. So the poet regrets that it is the work of man to capture the tiger. Now, when the poet describes or portrays the tiger in the jungle, so at that time, the tone, it changes. At that time, the tone is of admiration and awe for the majestic creature. Now, answers of the self-evaluation test. So, let's move on to the first question. Let me change the, it to pointer. Yes, now the first one. So, these are the expressions that you had to explain in his quiet rage. That is the first expression. So, tiger in the poem is confined in a cage. The awe-inspiring majestic creature is rendered helpless by man. So, when the tiger is behind bars, the tiger is helpless. This has filled the tiger with anger. Since he is beside, behind bars, sorry, he cannot attack. Thus, he suppresses his anger and walks quietly inside the cage without expressing his frustration. Hence, the poet describes this as quiet rage. So his anger, his frustration, that has been suppressed. He knows that it will be useless to roar here, to show his frustration, to show his anger. So therefore, he is quiet. Next is his strength behind bars. The above expression describes the helplessness of the tiger who cannot exercise his natural instincts because he is captivated. His strength, that is, the powerful and ferocious tiger, is behind the bars of the cage from where he cannot escape. So again, the tiger is helpless. Then he stares with his brilliant eyes at the brilliant stars. Now here, brilliant eyes. This is uh, different answers they have been given, but what I find is most suitable that I have explained here. So at night, the tiger is not able to sleep because he is sad, angry, and frustrated. In his helplessness, he stares at the shining, the twinkling stars at night with his brilliant eyes. Now, the brilliance, that is the shine in the eyes, uh, it is the shine of hope. So, light, it also always promises hope. So, brilliance, or the shine in his eyes is of hope. He dreams to be free once again, like those stars in the sky. The vast open sky reminds him of his captivity. So, when he looks at the stars in the vast open sky, he is reminded that he is not free. He is in captivity. So, as he lies idle inside the cage, he directs his attention towards the stars with hopeful eyes. So, there is hope in the shining eyes. Otherwise, the poet would have written, it as or described it as dull eyes. So there is hope. Next, he should be lurking in shadow, sliding to long grass. Now in these lines, the poet expresses that the tiger should actually be doing. So he expresses what the tiger should actually be doing. Actually, the tiger should be in the jungle, not inside a cage. So according to him, the tiger should be in the jungle, hiding amidst the shadows of trees and stealthily passing through the long grass. He should be waiting near the water hole for a well-fed deer to pass. So well-fed here, the plump, plump deer to pass. Next, he stalks in his vivid stripe. So this is the opening line of the poem. So right in the beginning, the poet introduces us with a proud and majestic tiger in his bright and colorful stripes. He stiffly walks the limited length of the cage. Now, why it is stiffly and proud? Because stalks, it means to stride somewhere in a proud, stiff and angry manner. So he is both angry as well as he is proud at his might. Now, Next extract we have, question number six. So first question is, who is he in this line? So he, in the above line, obviously, is the tiger. Why should he be lurking in shadow? So he should be lurking in shadow to hide himself from his prey to attack it. Little device in that stanza that is given. So it is alliteration for plump and pass. So per sound is repeating. Now, what is the rhyme scheme? Now, rhyme scheme is A, B, C, B and rhyming words grass and pass. Then the word that suggests ambush in the stanza, it is lurking. Next question, why does the tiger ignore visitors? The tiger is angry at being caged. He is away from his natural habitat where he would have been free. 
Thus feeling frustrated and offended, he ignores the visitors whom he finds emotionless as they don't sympathize with his pain. Also, he feels that he is not an object to be displayed. So the tiger is a proud animal. He's a majestic animal. He's angry because he has been captured and therefore he ignores the visitors and he feels that he is not an object to be displayed. What would the tiger do at the edge of the jungle? Now, at the edge of the jungle, the tiger would terrorize the villagers by snarling at them, baring his fangs and claws. How does the tiger spend his night? Sleep eludes the tiger at night. So the tiger stares at the billion stars with his shining eyes. Though he is sad, but the shine in his eyes reflects hope for freedom. How does the tiger hunt in the forest? In the forest, the tiger hides amidst the shadow of tall trees and slides through the long grass towards the water hole. Water hole is the place in the jungle where animals come to quench their thirst. So tiger awaits for such a moment when a plump deer would pass from there. He pounces upon the deer to satisfy his hunger. So this is his strategy to hunt. Give an example of onomatopoeia. From the poem, so onomatopoeia, the sound words are snarling there. So we have onomatopoeia. Then why does the tiger stalk the length of the cage? Unable to do anything on being caged, the tiger walks the length of the cage in anger. So he has nothing to do in the cage. He cannot run, he cannot follow, he cannot chase, he cannot attack. So therefore, he just walks the length of the cage, the limited length of the cage. So that is the limited space he has in contrast to the vast jungle had he been free. This shows his helplessness and suppressed rage. Which is the last voice that the tiger hears at night and what is its significance? This is an important question. So the last voice that the tiger hears is that of patrolling cars that take rounds of the zoo to keep a watch. It signifies the contrast of voices that the tiger might have heard if he had been in the jungle. The voices of other animals, insects or rustling of leaves etc. Now here he hears the voice of patrolling cars keeping a watch on him and reminding him that he is in captivity and his movement is restricted. So this is the significance. Those cars, those cars actually they are keeping a watch on him. Keeping a watch on him here means all the animals in the zoo. But here we are talking about the tiger. So he, the cars, they are keeping a watch on him and reminding him that you are captured. You are in captivity in the zoo. Now, why is the tiger angry? How does the tiger express his anger and why? The tiger is angry at being caged. He expresses his anger by walking the limited space of the cage with suppressed anger or suppressed rage. He finds himself helpless inside the cage. So therefore, this anger. Now, describe the tiger in the zoo and in the jungle as portrayed by the poet. Or how does the poet contrast the tiger in the cage and the tiger in the jungle. Now the tiger in the zoo has been portrayed by the poet as helpless and angry. The mighty and the majestic creature is captured and put behind bars. In his bright stripes, he walks the limited length of the cage in anger, which is suppressed. He stays idle inside the cage and is provided with food by the zookeepers. He is displayed as an object of entertainment, but in his pride, he ignores them. So them here actually is the visitors. Even at night, he is not able to sleep and stares at the brilliant stars that intensify his helplessness. So he stares at the brilliant stars with his shining eyes, hoping to be free someday. In contrast to this, the tiger in the jungle is free and independent. He follows his natural instincts there and hunts according to his will. He roams around the forest without any restrictions. Sometimes, he even snarls at the villagers at the edge of the jungle, terrorizing them with his bare fangs and claws. Though he roars and terrifies the villagers, he doesn't attack them until provoked. So this is the contrast between the two. Now find the words from the poem that means to walk with measured step or haughty strides at a stalk, full rounded or fat, the word is plump from the poem, then keep watch over an area by regularly walking or traveling around it, the word is patrolling. Then make an aggressive growl with bad teeth. Word is snarl. 
lying hidden or moving about secretly as if to ambush someone. The word is lurking. Dazzling or shining is brilliant in the poem and intensely deep or bright is vivid in the poem. Now we have the significance of these lines in the poem. So what a whole, sorry, lines, these are not lines, these are the words or phrases. So what a whole in near the water hole in this line, what does it signify? So water hole is a place or it's a pond in the jungle where all the animals, they come to quench their thirst. So mostly tigers and lions, they hide and wait near the jungle pond for their prey. Therefore, the poet writes near the water hole where plump deer pass. Next, the word plump. What does it signify in where plump deer pass? Plump signifies a well-fed and fat deer. It also points to the freedom of the tiger to choose his prey, that is food, of his liking, in contrast to be satisfied with whatever is given to him in the zoo. So this is a beautiful contrast. In the jungle, the tiger is free to choose his prey. So if he wants this deer or the other one, so he chooses a fat one. But he has to be satisfied with whatever is given to him in the zoo. Then but. In but he is locked in a concrete cell. The word but here highlights the whole lot of difference caused in the life of the tiger. The tiger, who should have been in the jungle, free to move, hunt, terrify others and enjoy his freedom under the stars, is captured in a concrete cell. So but signifies his helplessness at being caged. So that's all for today. Do subscribe to my channel. Give it a thumbs up. And follow me on Instagram also where I'll tell you beforehand that what is going to be my next video. Share this video with all your friends. And these are the videos that I've already posted. Already they are there. And these are very important from examination point of view. Analytical paragraphs, all types. Bar graph, line graph, pie chart, all are there. Then all formal letters, inquiry letter, complaint letters, placing order letter, letter to the editor, they are there. Then important questions from all the almost all the chapters in the poems, and this is the most important thing: CBSC sample paper, sold CBSC sample paper 2021, along with the marking scheme, is there for your reference. So you can go and check the playlist. I'll also be giving all the links in the description box. Go and watch these and prepare for your exams. So all the best and happy watching. Bye for now.